Hi, my name's Lou, welcome to my channel. In this week's video I'm going to be talking to you about lino printing. So I'm a printmaker and lino is one of the mediums that I use and this week I cut this lino block and I'm going to be showing you the process of this. I'm going to be uh, talking to you about the materials and the tools that you use and uh, yeah, you'll want to see what it looks like. So this is the this is my first proof of this print and in next week's video I'm going to be taking you through how to get from this stage to a really professional clean looking print and I'm going to be talking to you about some different methods of printing at home uh, that you can use uh, whatever your budget is. So let's talk a little bit about tools and, uh, and blocks. So today I'm going to be uh, using this which is traditional lino comes in like a grey colour usually sometimes I've seen brown but uh, yeah it's it's got the hessian backing sometimes you can get it like mounted to um, like an MDF block um, but yeah this is just comes as it is and then you cut out to size what you want just with a, a craft knife there are some alternatives here are some that I have so this is soft cut. It's got one shiny side and a slightly rougher side and it's really quite soft and floppy and it's much easier to cut into. Soft cut, it's like it's in the name. Uh, so if you, uh, if you struggle with kind of motor control or um, you know, if you're wanting something kind of nice and soft to start with um, to try it out and see if you like it then this is a good option. So you can get some uh, stuff called soft cut but is a little bit harder, a little bit firmer and uh, and it's usually this kind of grey colour and, um, and it works in a very similar way it's nice and smooth but uh, but yeah just a little bit firmer and that helps it like hold a line a little bit better. In a similar kind of style this is very very smooth, it's called Japanese vinyl and it's blue on one side and green on the other and then it's grey in the middle so when you cut into it it's really easy to see where you've been. I think it's useful to get a few, a few different things and try them out and see what you like. Um, they also might behave a little bit differently with the ink and the paper that you use so it's it's useful to kind of experiment a little bit so you can buy like these in very small amounts and just try them out you'll also need something to cut with and when you get started with lino printing something like this is perfectly good this is an Este cutter and um, it comes with or you buy you can buy sets of blades for it that gives you different kind of cutting depths and different sizes. Uh, generally lino cutters have a U gouge um, or a V gouge and a V gouge um, helps you cut fine lines and a U gouge helps you clear areas. Um, so yeah, so I used one of these for years before getting these cutters which I use now and when I got these the difference between them is um, yeah, it's quite something. So if you're getting started that's absolutely fine but you may struggle with uh, it a little bit because it's not quite as sharp as, uh, as a good quality uh, metal tool. These are called file tools um, and it's P-F-E-I-L and I got three and I don't really feel like I need for any more. I've got a very very fine V gouge for cutting very very detailed lines and uh, yeah I think I got the smallest one that I could possibly get. I got a kind of a medium sized uh, U gouge uh, for clearing away smaller areas and then I got quite a big uh, U gouge for clearing away larger areas. I'm going to put a link in the description box down below to the place where I got these from. Now it's uh, an affiliate link so uh, if you buy anything through that link then you get 10% off and then I get a little bit of commission too. So you'd be helping the channel if you bought something through that link. Uh, but uh, just I've I found these tools to be really good so I wanted to recommend them. And in order to keep my tools sharp I used this um, a slip strop from Flexcut 
Um, it comes with some like honing compound that you rub onto the surface and then it's got lots of different kind of uh, different shaped surfaces that you can hone your tools on. And then I've got a few tools for drawing, uh, a few tools for drawing the original design, um, but then also for transferring them onto the lino. So I use some carbon paper, uh, pencils, really useful, I like a mechanical one, but it's personal preference. Uh, and then I've got a few different pens, a fine liner, a brush pen I find really useful for creating softer marks and for filling in uh, larger areas. And then I've also got a white pen which helps me if I want to kind of see where the, the detail is. I can go over some of the darker areas with a white pen and kind of add back in some detail. So I've got all of those. So let's get on with the printing. So for the lino I'm doing today, I've already made a sketch in my sketchbook and the design is a J, it's J for January and I've surrounded it with uh, juniper and jasmine. Can you see the theme there? Well, I'm thinking of doing one a month uh, for, the, for the months of the year and, and then eventually over the course of a couple of years filling out the whole alphabet. So I've already made the sketch in my sketchbook and all I'm doing is uh, putting a piece of tracing paper over it and tracing around it. I'm just deciding like how much detail I want to put on the tracing paper, how much do I want to transfer to the block. And for this I'd say pretty much all of it. For next month I'm planning to do F for February and I am thinking I'll document the process of designing that. So I'll show you how I got to the, uh, the sketch in the sketchbook stage when it comes to next month's print. So I've already cut my lino to size. I've made it just a little bit bigger than the design that I'm drawing. And it's really important when you're doing lettering, well when you're doing anything really, but especially with lettering, to flip your tracing over so that your letter is back to front. Because you need to remember that when you print it, uh, what, whatever is in your block will be mirrored. So if you're doing any writing, you need to make sure it's, it's back to front. Um, I'm just putting a piece of carbon paper underneath the dark side down. And then I'm using my pencil and I'm going over all of the lines that I've just traced. For most of the lines I'm going to put all of the detail in. So for the J and for the, the jasmine flowers I'm going to be really careful. And I'm going to make sure I get all of the little berries and leaves in the right place. But the, uh, the leaves of the juniper I want to be a little bit more fluffy and less careful. So I'm just putting in a few lines that just will give me a sense of direction. And so in order to get those kind of fluffy leaves, I'm going to practice a little bit first in my sketchbook and I'm just going to use my brush pen and try a few leaves, see what they, uh, they could look like. Uh, and once I'm happy with it, then I'll do it straight onto the lino in the direction of those little lines that I put in. I'm also colouring in where the berries and the little leaves will be um, with the brush pen, just because it's, uh, it'll be a little bit quicker than with the fine liner. And then I go all over all of the detailed areas with the fine liner around the edge of the letter, making sure to keep those lines really smooth. And uh, I will mark in where all of the flowers go as well. And now I'll use the white paint pen uh, just to reinstate some of the detail in those leaves, uh, just where I want the very fine lines to be cut. Uh, it just helps me mark the, the surface of the lino and uh, work out where I want the, the very fine detail to be. And it'll help those areas stand out a little bit better when they're cut.
Now it's time to start the process of carving and I use my finest cutter to start um, going around the outside of the, uh, of the letter to start with um, but then very carefully going around the outside of where all of the uh, little leaves are and the flowers are that I've done with the different types of pen. And once I've very carefully outlined an area with that very fine gouge, I'm going in with a slightly bigger one, slightly larger U-shaped gouge, and that will allow me to clear slightly larger areas like the inside of this, uh, this highlight on the letter uh, just a little bit quicker. Now it's just a case of doing that on the whole thing. So going around all of the uh, outside of the lines of the of the leaves, of the flowers, of everything um, and using the detailed uh, V-shaped cutter to get in and do the really fine details and using the slightly larger U-shaped gouge to, uh, to clear out any slightly larger areas. Having gone round the outside with the uh, fine tool and then the slightly larger one as well, I can now go in with this much larger U-shaped gouge and clear away the, uh, the large flat areas of lino. I've now cut away all around the edge and any uh, kind of areas of background in between the flowers and leaves and now it's time to put the detail into those flowers, those floral sections so that uh, you can tell the difference between the leaves and the berries and the flowers. So I'm just going to carve around these little um, sections of three leaves together and the 
berries, make sure they're all nicely outlined. And then I'm going to go in and clear the centres of the, the flower petals. I'm going to leave a little bit of texture towards the centre of the flower just to give you some kind of like idea of the direction that the petals are going in. Uh, but mostly it's going to be uh, it's going to be the like the background colour. Um, so I'm going to clear most of it away and try and leave very fine lines um, for the outlines of the petal. In order to see how much detail that I've left and what to what it might look like when I print it, I'm just going over the surface very, very delicately with a brush pen and just colouring that in and it'll show me where my detailed lines are and it'll let me know whether I've got enough detail in there. And when I think I've finished my final design and finished all the carving, I use the same technique and colour it all in with a brush pen to just check my design, check that I'm happy with it before I, uh, before I move on and do a proof print. And I decide I just want a little more detail in the leaves, so I start uh, putting a centre line down those sections of the three little leaves together and uh, and then it needs a little bit of a, a tidy up in some places as well so I just do that and then I'm ready for my first proof So I've created a registration sheet on a standard A4 size piece of paper. Um, what I've done on here is I've marked the rectangle for where the mount would be and I've also marked these two lines on it here and here and that's for the top and the bottom of the letter. So the top of the J and the bottom of the J should line up with those lines on there and that means that whatever letter I cut, if I make them to a standard size and I print them using uh, this uh, formula every time, then you could hang two letters next to each other and the letters would be at the same height. So I'm going to arrange my letter on the registration sheet and to get it lined up properly, centre it and get the top of the J lined up with the, this top line here, like that. It, it's slightly on an angle, the block is slightly on an angle, so I, when I transferred the letter onto the, um, the block, I obviously didn't do it quite straight. And then when I'm happy with the positioning of it, I can draw around it like this. And then I can remove my block from here and when I put it back, it'll always be at the same position. So I've got my ink rolled out nice and smoothly. I'm going to move my block down here and ink it up. Now I can move it to my registration sheet and line it up with that line that I drew and we're ready to print. Take my paper line it up with the registration sheet, making sure it's nice and central. And now I'm going to use the spoon. And you need to give it a fair bit of pressure. Make sure you get into all of the corners. Right. 
And there we go. So I've got this uh, print to the first proof stage and I'm really happy with it so far but it does need a little bit of cleaning up and I, I really like clean edges on the paper so I'm going to uh, do a little bit more work on it and I'm going to do another video next week where I show you how I print things, how I'll create an edition of prints and how I go about uh, mixing and choosing colours and the process of inking up and printing. So thanks very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see the, the printing process in more detail then do uh, look for next week's video because um, I'll be going through all of that. Uh, if you uh, want to see more art, uh, sewing and creative content then please do subscribe to my channel. If you like the video I'd really like it if you hit the thumbs up button and uh, yeah I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye!